Good morning and welcome to worship at Madam Russell United Methodist Church on this third Sunday after Epiphany. On that first day, you, O oh God, gave birth to creation. You said, let there be light. Your light came into the chaos of this world and danced through the darkness. You transformed the watery deep into life-giving waters. Chaos enveloped your creation once again. You sent your Son as light in this darkness. He stepped into the life-giving waters of the Jordan to initiate your new creation. Through our baptism, we are called to be your new creation. In Christ Jesus, amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, worthily magnify your holy name, and wholeheartedly follow you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Our gospel reading for this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading for this morning takes place beside the lake of Gennesaret. And we see Jesus standing beside this lake and the crowd pressing in on him to hear the word of God. Two boats there on the shore of the lake and the fishermen had already gone out of their boats and are now washing their nets. And if we look back to um, chapter 4, what immediately precedes this. The last verse of chapter 4, verse 44, says, So he continued proclaiming the message in the synagogues of Judea. So Jesus is in the synagogues proclaiming the word of God, and then he moves out of the synagogues. And he now is standing on the lake shore. He gets into one of the boats because there is this crowd around him, right? And this boat belongs to Simon. And Simon, one of these fishermen who is done for the day, right? Getting ready to go home and have dinner, I guess. But he says, Simon, let's go back out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon, being the fisherman that he is, and probably successful fisherman because that's how he made his living knows that this going back out is futile, right? He's already been out there all night. He's not caught anything. There's no point. But when Jesus Christ says to go back out to cast your nets, he, Simon says, yes, master. And when they go out, they catch so many fish, their nets are overflowing. So they signal their partners in the other boats to come help them. And Jesus, at Simon Peter's response, says, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. They left everything and followed him. 
So this call for Simon Peter and, and James and John, the sons of Zebedee, to go and catch people. We often think of this passage um, as being for those of us who feel called to a specific role of ministry, right? But it's very important to notice the crowd that is pressing in on him to hear the word of God. And it's very important to notice that Jesus comes to the lake shore and gets in the boat with this fisherman. Simon, who is called Peter, continues in his role in ministry, as do James and John, but Simon also goes back to fishing. We see Simon fishing after the resurrection, we see Peter fishing after the resurrection in the Gospel of John. So these people are called not only to ministry, but to ministry in their own work, in their own jobs. So this call is not just for those of us who are called to stand behind this pulpit. This call of Jesus to follow him and be fishers of men is not just for those of us who are called to go to seminary. You see, this transition from the synagogue out into the world, the everyday world, challenges all of us to move from these pews and go out into the everyday world and spread the gospel. The gospel cannot be confined between these walls. And we've seen this play out over this, this last uh, almost year now, that the gospel is traveling further and further through the internet. Just like in the time of Jesus, still today, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ is a relational message. It is best spread by getting to know people, by getting into their lives, into their world, into their everyday lives, their jobs, their, their homes, into relationship with them, where they are every day, not just on Sunday morning, one day a week. You see, when we read the Gospel of Luke and, and hear about Jesus' journey, Jesus' teachings, Jesus' healings, Jesus' um, preaching, Jesus' miracles, we always read them in light of that passage we read last week where he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Our God is not a God who, who is in heaven and waves a magic wand to make these things happen. For good news to come to the poor, um, abracadabra, the blind have recovered sight. Abracadabra, the oppressed go free. No, that's not how it works. This message, this good news of Jesus Christ is a human message. It's a message that we are all called to give, that we are all called to proclaim. This call for discipleship is a call for each and every one of us to go out from our worship in our church, in our synagogue, in our temple, to go out from our worship into the everyday world and see the crowds and proclaim the good news to the crowd, to follow Jesus to the people, to the world, our, our founding father, John Wesley, realized that the gospel message could not be contained within these walls as well. Like Jesus, 
standing beside the lake proclaiming the word of God. John Wesley went to the streets to proclaim the word of God. He went where the people were into their everyday lives to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is what we are to do. We follow Jesus. We become fishers of men. And we remember that as we go and fish, we are not alone. We have partners in boats around us. Jesus has gone before us and the Holy Spirit in our hearts, enabling us to have overflowing nets. Amen. give you a moment now to type in any joys or concerns that you would like to share and have lifted up by your family here at Madam Russell. to be part of your purpose. All thanks and praise to you, for you hear our prayers for the church, the world, and all who live in it. We pray for the church and for all who work to bring others a word of compassion. Strengthen us that we may follow you in being fishers of men. We pray for peace, both among the nations and within our nation. Help us to put aside our differences and recognize that we are better together. We pray for those suffering from war or calamities of nature. Guide us to offer compassion and work toward the renewal of your creation. We pray for those who are oppressed and need courage to resist May they know the freedom you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for those who, because of illness or hardship, are paralyzed by fear. Instill your courage and compassion into them and us, that we may offer your love to those who are hurting. God of majesty and glory, 
Through Jesus Christ, you summon us into your compassion for all creation. Renew in us your call and release us from all fear that we may testify in words and deeds to your steadfast love for all. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are invited to cast our nets into God's abundance, and to share what we have received with others. As we give our tithes and offerings today, we put our trust in the one who has called us to follow him, Jesus Christ, the great fisher of people. one, we give thanks for your generosity to us. Bless these gifts and multiply them for the sake of those in need around us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us turn to the Most Holy One and confess our sin, confident in God's faithful and steadfast love for us. God of the universe and creator of all that is, we admit that we fail to be honest about our lives and in the politics of life. Sometimes we are deceitful. Other times we judge ourselves harshly and feel unworthy of your call on our lives. Sometimes we answer your call fully and take every opportunity to be fishers of men. Other times we give you empty promises and only half-heartedly follow Jesus. Touch us with your grace and dispel our fear that we may arise with renewed spirits to serve and follow you, our true sovereign. The promise is this. God is faithful and steadfast, eager to forgive our sins and teach us his ways. In Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen.
into the deep waters. We are not alone. We have partners in other boats around us, and Christ has gone before us. Let down your nets, expecting God's abundant provision. Go and be fishers of people. Amen. <laughs>